Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video. Today we have something super special for you. I'm getting fitted for my brand new irons. Now, I've got some really special things coming up actually. Um, so in the next few weeks, we've got a tournament that we're going to be playing in. That's going to be the Queensland Amateur and that is going to be super, super awesome. So we're getting fitted for these irons for that. Without further ado, let's get in there and let's see what this is all about. So just for a brief minute, I'm just going to jump in here because what Callaway have that you may not be aware of is an online selector tool. So with this selector tool, you can actually go online to the Callaway website. You can check out what irons might be suitable for your game so that when you go to a professional fitting, you can ask to try out those irons. All we do, I'm going to put it up here on screen. I'm going to select custom fitting, which is going to bring the online selector tool. So you can do this for a bunch of different stuff. Um, it's going to show you locations as well, but I'm going to go iron selector, get started. Um, gender, hand orientation, next, uh, what's the typical handicap, three on a good day, 23 on a bad day. Uh, what's the longest iron that you're comfortable hitting? I'm going to say four iron, I don't particularly like to hit a three iron, I would prefer a two iron, so just four iron in a standard iron set. How far do you hit your seven iron? Now I looked at the other ones, I'm pretty sure this is in yards, so I'm just going to go um, on average around about 175 to 180, I'll just go 180 on a really well struck seven iron in yards. I think that's around about 160 to 165 meters. What are your top three iron characteristics? Well, for me, I like to have good distance. I want good distance, uh, sorry, good feel, and also I want good distance control. In the middle here, it's gonna ask you about your hybrid characteristics because it's trying to fill that gap in your bag between a, you know, a three wood uh, and your four iron. So I want good distance again, I want it to be workable, and I want a high trajectory. So here's coming the iron recommendations. It's just gonna think for a minute, gather the information, and then it's gonna spit out what we should be recommended. So it's saying that the top recommendation is going to be the Rogue ST Pro irons and then the secondary recommendations are going to be the Apex Pro 21 irons and the Apex 21 irons to test out for my game. With that being said, that's going to be really interesting. Let's get back to the video. Let's see what irons I actually get fitted into and what irons that, uh, that I'm going to be given. Well, good everyone. Welcome back again. So here we are. We're with Chris and we're going to have a Callaway iron fitting today. So for Chris, the new expert here at Callaway. Welcome, mate. Welcome. Thanks, thanks, mate. Cheers. Yeah. Happy to be here. So I haven't told you anything yet, and I kind of didn't want to. Yep. Um, mainly because, just like a lot of people, I'm going to go and look online, and I'm going to go and do a whole lot of research about clubs and whatever, and have my own opinions. But what do you look for when people come in? Like, what should we be doing when we're coming to a professional fitting? Uh, I guess the biggest thing is uh, bring your equipment with you. That's probably the first mistake some people make is they just come without their equipment. Um, we yep. want to gauge it against what you're currently playing, mm -hmm. uh, and then once we've once we've seen what you've got. We'll obviously chat about what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. um, what you want from the new iron, whether you want distance or more ball flight, more spin, um, more descent angle. You know, there's a, a thousand parameters that we track. So it, it's all dependent upon the player. Um, yep. And we really go into depth into what you want. So every person's individual, every person has different needs, different heights, different sizes. So uh, we, we just go through the whole process with every single person and then we'll figure out and get you the best result we can with the, uh, with the new equipment. Awesome. All right. Well, I've had some warm-up shots, but maybe we should get some base numbers with my 7-iron. Yeah, perfect. We'll get yours out and yep. um, we'll get some data on that and then we can base that against what we test later. Yep, cool. Awesome. So what are you currently playing on? Handicap wise, yep. uh, between three and four. Okay. Depends on the day and yep. where I'm playing. So. And what do you generally see out of your irons? What 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 do you see most? Draw, fade, low, high. So typically, I'm trying to hit a soft draw. Yep. Most of the time, um, I just find it's a little bit easier to control. I can be hitting fades if I want to. I just have the tendency to sometimes, if I hit a fade, I can lose it right or I can double cross it and just hit it straight left. My bad shot with a draw if I miss it is a slight block and I feel like that's just easier for me to mitigate the risk against than losing a fade. So just like that basically is if I'm hitting yeah if I'm hitting it well on course that's what I'm expecting to see. Okay. And you, and you like that flight window you see you don't want it higher or lower than that? 
I, I like that as a stock shot. If I'm hitting it into the wind at say Hope Island or somewhere like that, I'm probably trying to get it a bit lower. Um, so I can do that. Just when I try and do it at the moment, what tends to happen is I, I kind of lose a little bit of that soft draw and I can block it. So if I try and bring that flight down just with this shot. Okay, that was pretty good. But what, yeah, the, the bad shot of that would be that I could push it. And do you feel sometimes when you try to play that lower one, it's not as compressed? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. like I'm not hitting down on it as much. I'm, yep. I'm kind of sliding the club head through yep. just, just to keep the impact a bit yep. Yep. lower. So, so you're, you're, you're sort of, a, get, you would like for the club to do a little more of that for you than as, as in control of the one you want to play lower. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I, I would, overall, I would say that I would prefer a lower ball flight. Yep. Some more distance, same distance. I, I like a seven iron to go around that 155, 160 mark. It's more the top end of the bag. Like I don't like a four iron that goes 180, 185 where it gets too weak in the loft. Yep. But then there is a bit of a trade off because when you come to the lower end of the bag, you, you've got that gap at the bottom. So that was just quietly probably the best three shots <laughs> in a row. I've hit in a long time. There's no excuse then. No, right, no so we'll excuse. We'll start off with Apex Pro. Okay, um, Apex Pro. How are we going to start uh, the standard line angle, uh, standard length? I'm giving you the same weight that yep. you have in your current club. Yep. Um, a little bit of a lower launching shaft by the book, but every person's different. So, whilst you know the spec of it might be a lower launching shaft or a lower spinning shaft, everyone produces the golf club differently and it's going to change the way it comes out. So, uh, what we'll do is we'll hit five or six with this, get some feedback off you, feel, look, uh, what you're seeing with the golf shot. We can match that data up with what we want to see. And then we can go from there and we can start to test the other models and then we'll start getting more into it. How good do they look? All right, so Apex Pro 120 Nippon shaft, right? Modus? Shaft. Yep. In stiff. Yeah, that's just a lie angle, I think, standard. So I didn't tell you, mine are two up, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Or two and a bit, but that felt nice, though. And appearance of it, you like the look of it? I do, down by the ball. Yep. It looks looks really nice. The top line is, is not too thin, yep. so it kind of sits at a Really nice window for me. Yeah, that's nice. Good strikes. I just just push them a bit right with that lie angle. That's uh, hot. Shaft. Thoughts on the shaft? Didn't notice. It probably plays just a touch stiffer than that, but it was quite nice. Yeah. Quite yeah. Nice. Okay. One of our new line, uh, Rogue ST Pro. Yep. Uh, same shaft you tried in the first one. Okay. Yep. So we're same shaft. Don't these just look incredible? Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really good Get looking going. Get a go that. Yeah, that, straight away, that feels really nice. Really good. That's gone, like, that's gone a little bit higher, but I can tell that the spin's lower. I don't know what Trackman's saying there. So we do have Trackman set up. Yeah, correct, the spin a little lower. Yeah. Launch was higher, correct. Yeah. So spin was lower, yeah. launch was higher. Yeah. So I was all right, that's good. These, so I've hit these before in the shop and these are so easy to hit. Like, I really do like them. It's in that player's distance category, but at the same time, um, it's got a lot of workability still. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when you get into those distance type irons, they're very hard to use shape as a better player. Yeah. This iron, you'll be able to still do what you want to do, yeah. um, but you're gonna get a little more out of it than say one. Yeah, so you're gonna get that, that same workability, just a bit more pop, basically. 100%, exactly right. And I like the top line too, even though it's, it's like a player's distance line, they haven't gone crazy with making it big and bulky. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. And I love it how they've kept the sole nice and thin. So they haven't added the hollow body and then got a fat sole, like it's gonna get in and out of the turf. Yeah, and, and I guess the big thing with that iron is, you know, we want guys in your range to play it, but we want guys off 10 to play it as well. So yeah. if we'd have gone really fat, then the guy in your range would have gone, it doesn't interact with the turf well enough. Yeah. I can't hit some certain shapes and I can't hit the lower one, I can't hit the higher one. Because with that wider sole, obviously you get a little bit more of that bounce and that pop out pop, through the yeah. ground. Um, which, you know, some players need because they don't get down into the golf ball enough. You yeah. obviously don't need that. And that's why we want that iron to have that for you. Yeah. Right? Does that I make sense? Felt like straight away that was going a good distance further as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. So, you know, overall it's it's probably the longest, those last two are the longest by far so far. Uh, yeah. Apex Pro you probably hit quite nicely as well. Um, you hit your iron quite nicely as well, so that's yeah. that's not too bad. But um, And that shaft felt good in that head? 
Yeah, it did. I, I, I'd be keen, what's the main difference when we're looking at shafts if we go to something like a graphite as opposed to, because I've never played graphite, but yeah. I know that it is getting more popular. Yep, 100%. Uh, so, Ricky Fowler used graphite, you know, recently he put a set of graphites in play. Yep. A couple other guys, Pat Perez is using some graphite. Yep. Um, obviously, everyone knows Bryson uses graphite. Yeah. It'll be a 105 gram uh, Mitsubishi Chemical MMT shaft. Yep, that's um, a X stiff TX. Yeah, X yep. stiff, exactly right. So, most of the feedback we get from most people is that the graphite feels really stable. Yeah. Um, doesn't feel like sometimes when you lose a little bit of the pocket, uh, most people seem to feel like they've got complete control. I love the black too. Yeah, so this Mitsubishi MMT 105 TX shaft in graphite. Standard length still? Still standard length, yep. yep. See, I didn't hit that one very well and it's still it's got like the forgiveness there. Like it, it's yep. still gotten probably not far short of where I hit the other lot. Yep. That's gonna look right on the launch monitor, but that's really where I'm aiming anyway. Yeah, exactly right. So the ones that are straighter on that are actually gonna be yeah. left. Yeah. I gotta say, I think I feel the most comfortable with this okay. yep. shaft. Yep. I feel like that's gone the furthest as well. 100%. It did? Yep. Yeah. Yes, okay. Got that one to 169 carry. 169 carry. So I've gained nearly 10 meters. Yep. You're still getting your spin rate of 6,000. We haven't we haven't gotten heaps of distance out of low spin. Yeah. Which is obviously a concern because you know um, sometimes with better players with the strength and loss we get that lower launching, lower spinning one that goes a long way. Yeah. But when you go to play golf at Hope Island or Sanctuary Cove or somewhere like that, and you want that descent angle to come down and stop with some spin, you don't have that. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're still maintaining those those aspects of your golf game and your, and your shot shape, but we're getting it out of similarly a better feel through the stability of the graphite. I, I feel like I'm more connected with the club, with yeah. the graphite. Yeah. Still right in our wheelhouse of where we want launch angle spin. Yeah. Um, you know, and the total distances are they're really, really good. Yeah. Right. Um, the best the best thing I like about what you're hitting with that over probably the 120 gram stiff was uh, every now and then you if you miss hit it a little bit higher on the face you get that sort of dippy yeah, yeah. spinny one. Okay? Yeah. The, and obviously we don't want that. The dead right? duck. Yeah. 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 And and you know you're hitting a seven iron into a green the last shot you want to see. Yeah. The miss hit we had that first one. Um, whilst, yeah, it didn't go as far, the spin rate stayed at 5,000, so it's still not going to go yeah. over end, over end. And if you miss hit a club, you're going to miss hit it, right? Exactly like, right. You're always going to lose distance. Exactly right. Yeah. They, feel, they feel so easy to hit, like, just like the, the driver, the Max LS, it's kind of like point and shoot. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I kind of like. Okay, so here's some of the data here. Um, so the bottom one here in the blue is mine. So club path, we've got the face path, ball speed. So that was the MMT. That's the best ball speed yep. with the MMT and the Rogue Pro. Yep. And so 123. And your distances are obviously, uh, you're probably the Apex Pro is probably a little further. Yeah, um, Apex Pro the was the first one. spin goes down a little too much for my liking. Yeah, so. Whereas the average spin, even with your couple of miss hits with the MMT, yep. were much better. But when we put the Pro back into the MMT, I'll be very interested to see where those spin rates turn. Yeah, okay. Cool. What's the average club speed at the moment? Uh, 92 to 94. 92 to 94, okay. I mean, see, when you hit this like that, I know that's a bit shorter, but that feels incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Like the feel that you get from this is so nice. It's amazing how a shaft makes a difference to the feel of the club head. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm not necessarily a person that, that feels where the club head is all the time. I kind of more want to just trust the swing. Yep. So I, I kind of feel like if I can trust the swing, then the club head's going to be in the right spot. Yep. And I guess that's where the shaft comes in to match the swing, right? Okay. In terms of the consistency, do you see that the, the Apex Pros are a bit more consistent with their ball flight and spin rates than the Rogue? Yeah, a little bit. Um, for you, actually, your dispersion's actually a bit tighter with the... Uh, the Rogue? The yeah, yeah. okay. I think it's like it's like the old thing with blades, right? Like when you hit a pure blade out of the middle, it just there's nothing really that compares to it. But how many times you're going to be able to do that out of ten compared to something like the ST Pro, where it's you know your chances of probability are a lot higher. 
Yeah, I hit that one pretty good. Yeah, that was fun. All right, so as you see here, the Apex Pro uh, with the MMT is the second one down there. Okay. Yep. Um, now, your totals obviously go down a little bit more. Like you said, when you get that miss hit, it sort of falls out of the air a little bit. Spin rates are very, very consistent, though, in regard of uh, what you're doing uh, off the miss hits and the uh, good strikes. Yep. However, performance-wise, you don't really compete with the Rogue Pro. The Rogue Pro basically outcompetes everything. Yeah. Um, and I think that's shown there that, you know, those those there, uh, and disregard club path, because where you're hitting it isn't where the track man's aimed. But the if we look back on, if we look on the dispersion here, and you know, they're right at the target line because of my yeah, aim that's where the track man, that's fine. Yeah. But if you look at uh, this, these uh, green dots here, obviously you had that one that you hit a cannon on, um, but the dispersion of those with that uh, Rogue ST Pro is obviously way, way tighter. Yeah, it's a lot so, tighter. Um, and then therefore, you know, if we deleted that one bad one, that, that dispersion there, you'd yeah. be able to play that on any golf course in the world. Yeah, so you can see that's tight. Yeah. So just, just what he's talking about, there's a the track man there, which is lined up pretty much just straight at where that V is in the pole, but I'm actually aiming more there with everything so that's why we're going to be seeing seeing that which is fun even when you do hit a miss hit your uh, the, the st pro is just is just a far outweighing uh it's just, yeah. it's just a better performing club for you um we got a better result out of the graphite which yep. sometimes we do sometimes we don't um but for you it showed that the stability in that shaft uh, gave you that dispersion which tightened it right it up. It tightened it up again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so going from something what I'm playing at the moment which is stiff, I mean I did worry about whether that was a little bit too light. Yep. So even though I haven't gone heavier in a shaft, I've gone stiffer. Yes, and exactly And that's, right. that's the benefit the graphite's given me is, yeah. is to keep it still light but make it stiffer and then I've tightened up the dispersion. Yep. So, yeah, Good I mean, result. yeah, it's, it's really, really good. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a massive surprise because I have hit the Rogues before, the ST Pros, and I really loved them. But it's good just to compare it with the Apex Pro and actually go through and, and get a professional fitting and go, okay, well, there's data there now that's actually going to back up yep. what you were kind of feeling and you can make an informed decision as, let's go, let's do it this way. Yeah, get, go, go and get professionally fitted. It's the biggest advice I can give to anyone. Yeah. Uh, is you can go and get the, go and spend the time, get the expert to do it for you, um, and there's no guesswork. You know, with yeah. devices like TrackMan, we can prove the data and you'll see in the flight of the golf ball what you know what the difference is yeah, yeah exactly which is awesome all right mate perfect thank you no appreciate worries, mate. it no looking dramas. forward to it callaway rogue st pros which is ironic to be honest with you because as soon as i started hitting the driver i'm like this thing is absolutely insane <laughs> it's a beast yeah, yeah. i've used other drivers for years and then i hit that and i'm like that's just so easy to hit and then the three wood exact same <laughs> so now i'm going to have like a whole bag of just rogues you'll need to get a, <laughs> a rogue bag now yeah. to match all the set oh no here we go <laughs> something else i'll have to Email Callaway and say they need to create a rogue wedge. <laughs> All right, mate. Cheers. Appreciate well, guys, we're back here in the car, and i got to say, that was incredible. Again, just another experience of a lifetime to be able to go down to Top Golf and get professionally fit by Chris there. Massive thanks to Callaway AU and the team. Um, it, it's just a great experience. And, I mean, to go in there, I, I had my own thoughts of, of exactly what I wanted um, to get because I'd gone and done all the research, like I said, but to be able to go through and just hear their thoughts and their expertise and, and everything that comes with that, it just makes you feel like when you've gone away and you've made the decision, even if it was the same ones that I'm sort of going to be looking at anyway, the Rogue ST Pro irons, um, that you know why. Like you haven't just kind of gone and got them off a whim or you haven't just kind of gone and got them because they're popular or whatever. Um, they actually outperformed everything. They hit it straighter, they hit it further, they hit with really consistent spin rates. There's nothing there that I could have done that would have shown any other better performance from the irons that I tested. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm over the moon. I'm honestly so happy. I'm trying to hold it in, but really, it's just awesome. And I, I love this, you know. I really love being able to go and do this. I'm so thankful to everyone, um, all of my subscribers. And, and if you haven't subscribed, then please click subscribe. Hit the like button. It enables me to go and do this stuff and so I can create the content for you guys to go and see. Uh, and do this for yourselves, you know. Go and find out where your local fitting centers are and get in and get professionally fit with Callaway. So thanks, everyone. Again, I just love it. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.